Guys, I um I did it. I switched teams. I am no longer a Nintendo YouTuber. I am no longer Chris Tendo. I am Chronic the Hedgehog. Okay, no. Was that funny? Yeah, that that was that was funny, right? Um but no. Um you 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 see the title. I beat Sonic Frontiers. Um so a little backstory here. Um so obviously I'm in college right now. Uh because I'm studying computer science, which um <laughs> that's a mistake. But I'm in college right now, and it was just one weekend. There was, like, nothing going on on campus or whatever. So I open up my Steam uh, because I wanted to play a game. And I was like, what do I want to play? Because, honestly, this year, there hasn't really been a lot Nintendo-wise. So I haven't really had, like, the urge, I guess, to play Nintendo games as much as I would usually like. Um, and because of that, that's kind of made me open my... Expand my horizons. Not open my horizons. Expand my horizons. Um, and because of that, I was like, huh, I got Sonic Frontiers on Steam. And I was like, I've been wanting to play this game for a while. I've heard it was pretty good. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. We're going to play Sonic Frontiers. And that's what I did. The entire weekend. I could have spent working on videos, I could have spent doing other things, but no, I played Sonic Frontiers, and I started out on Friday night, beat it Sunday night. I think my final time was like about 18 hours, but you could probably like subtract half an hour because I think I left it on one day when I went to go get lunch or dinner or something. Um, but yeah, I, I, I beat Sonic Frontiers, um, and I will say, um, before I do get into the game, I do want to just make it clear. This was my first 3D Sonic game I beat. I've played a few of the other 3D Sonic games. I've played a little bit of Sonic Generations um, on the Xbox. Three, the 360 edition, obviously, but I played it on the Xbox One S um, through like that port or something. But I played a little bit of that. I think I got about halfway through, but I never beat it. Sonic Frontiers was the first Sonic game not Sonic game. First 3D Sonic game I beat. Um, so I thought, you know, this is kind of a special moment. I want to kind of like gather my thoughts and kind of talk about it in a unscripted format and kind of just like wrap my head around like what I think. I think um, with the problem with YouTube right now is there's a lot of like this high edited, high like energy kind of stuff and don't get me wrong some of it can be good content but sometimes we just need to slow down and that's kind of what i wanted to do today um as you could tell by the fact that i'm not cropping any audio and that i am going on tangents and that will probably be a consistent thing as <laughs> we get through this video but because of like the fact that i kind of want to slow down uh this is going to be kind of a new i guess take of video formatting on my channel um we're in between videos if i beat games or play games and i like yeah if i beat games i'll make a video about what i think about it um in this kind of format where it's just i sit down take some time to talk about the game hopefully it makes sense i guess you could say in a way this is kind of like a continuation of for those of you that have watched the channel for a while this is a continuation of uh like chris cast and chris's corner combined where it's like i'm talking about games but it's also like in a video form um so there's that like you can listen to it but you can also watch it so i guess this is like a continuation of chris's corner in a way uh just without my face or the the, the camera it's literally just the gameplay um which is another thing this is gonna be nice and simple just gameplay on the screen as i talk and some music in the background so uh, hopefully i choose some good music here but anyways let's get into the game because i've been rambling long enough um for those of you that didn't want to listen to the entire intro or listen to me ramble for four minutes, don't worry. I have the timestamps down below. That This is now at four minutes and 45 seconds. This is where the review actually starts. Okay, so Sonic Frontiers. I beat it. Crazy. Um, So, going into it, I was like, 
it's an open world Sonic game. I have faith it'll be somewhat good. And just to get out of the way now, Sonic Frontiers was really good. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is a hot take or not. There, I think a majority of people say it's a good game, but it's not the greatest Sonic game. Personally, as of right now, because keep in mind, I haven't played many 3D Sonic games. I haven't played some of the ones that are considered the best, like what? Shadow the Hedgehog is considered pretty good. Sonic 06 is considered like among like the masterpieces of masterpieces. So I haven't played any of those yet. But um, Sonic Frontiers, I thought was a really freaking good game. So um, well, let's kind of get into Sonic himself. Um, for the first time that Sonic is in an open world like setting, I feel like that um he controlled pretty well actually. Um. So obviously, I'm just going to be talking about the base game here. Um, like yesterday, I beat the uh, the DLC, so I'll probably do a separate video for that, just talk about the DLC stuff. Oh, so I am getting a lot of calls. I got a call from Donald Trump and now from Save the Children. Crazy. B political times, am I right? Political times in America. Anyways, um, <laughs> so um, he controls really well. Um, at first, it was like... It was kind of a learning curve because, again, this was my first Sonic game, so it was like kind of a learning curve of figuring out how he controls and stuff and like all his different abilities and all the button combos and stuff, for like attacks and stuff. And if I'm being honest, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't figure them all out. Um, I, I did figure out a couple of them though. Uh, and my favorite one is, especially for bosses. Um, I'm not going to get into Final Frontiers yet, but especially for bosses, my favorite one is the uh, the drop kick or ground pounder so whatever it's called drop kick ground pound same difference the one where sonic kicks the boss anyways very great attack i also like his dragon ball not dragon ball his attack where he throws balls that sounds really bad anyways sonic controls great in the game um there are points though where the game does um kind of i guess suffer a little bit in terms of like how it controls. One of the biggest examples I want to give is cyberspace. Um, so cyberspace, if you don't know, or if you've never played Sonic Frontiers, is kind of like the 2D levels in this 3D platformer Sonic game. They're not fully 2D, but they're like more linear. They're like the, I guess I should have said these are like the linear um, levels inside of Sonic Frontiers. And they um, kind of reuse the same themes that we've all come to know and love. You know, the green hills, the chemical plants, the angel I Or no, the, uh... Shoot, what's it called? Um... Sky Sanctuary, is that what it's called? I think that's what it's called. We're gonna go with that Sky Sanctuary. Yeah, it's Sky Sanctuary. The Sky Sanctuary is, you know, just the normal ones that they bring back in, like, every freaking game. Um... So, not bad. Uh, the levels themselves were pretty fun. Uh, the cyberspace levels were pretty fun. But I just didn't really like how Sonic controls in some of them. Like, he just feels kind of wonky. Um, so, one of the co like, mo like, most common complaints I heard about Sonic Forces, uh, just side tangent here. Uh, I promise this is going to be important. One of the side, or one of the things I heard about Sonic Forces is that in like the more linear sections, which was basically the whole game, Sonic controls like ass. And, um, he doesn't control ass in this game, but he controls, he kind of controls mediocre in the cyberspace, uh, like, levels. And, like, there are linear parts in the open worlds as well, like, where you go and get the memory tokens and stuff. Those are more linear, but I feel Sonic works just fine. But it feels like his physics get, like, changed when he gets into the cyberspace levels. I don't know if it was intentional or if, like... Maybe I'm maybe I'm looking into this too deep, and maybe he doesn't feel different. But I feel like he just didn't control as well. It might have also been the camera in those levels as well, because like you get the free range camera when it comes to the open world, but then when you're in the cyberspace levels, um, it's like the um, it's just the uh, it's like the fixed camera, like Mario Galaxy as an example. Cringe game, by the way. Um, <laughs> anyways. It's kind of like that, so because of that, you don't have any control of the camera, so you're not, like, fully feeling like you're in control of the game, which 
whatever. Not the biggest deal, but th that that was kind of like one of my biggest nitpicks, I guess, with the game. Um, on the topic of nitpicks, I gotta say, Chaos Island sucked booty cheeks. Okay, Chaos Island. Okay, don't get me wrong, it wasn't completely bad. Um, but there were um times where like so if you don't know what chaos island is like um it's um like where the 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 map is basically like a bunch of floating islands and there's a lot of like going between the different islands and stuff and i don't know what it was because i i'm not like remembering this at the top of my head but i do remember chaos island being kind of a pain in my left cheek it was like just just like traversing the island was miserable at some points um apparently there was a bird that you could have used to move across the islands but i never learned about that i was trying to find those damn rails that took you from island to island and because of that i spent a lot of time a lot of time on that island probably about like a good third of my playthrough was just on chaos island i don't even, that doesn't sound like a lot but that's like six hours on chaos island and i didn't i did not want to keep playing through chaos island i just wanted that shit to be done <laughs> um so there there was that i guess chaos island was kind of a pain well, i think the big thing though was i was i, I was low on the um the vault, to, uh, the vault keys to be able to get the Chaos Island vaults, and there was like cyberspace levels and stuff. And some of the ones on Chaos Island were stupid, in my opinion. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you specifics, but I remember some of the ones on Chaos Island being stupid. And because of that, um, I wanted to get new ones. But I've like beaten the bosses and stuff and used these like uh the, the little things, the little orbs, or I don't remember what they're called. Uh, to open the like cyberspace levels and I, I beat a lot of the bosses and I didn't know how to properly go about like traversing Chaos Island so because of that I was like stuck like I was like what do I even do because I was like am I even able to like continue because there was like points in the game where like because I think it's called like Starfield Islands or something like that. I don't remember what they're called. But anyway, sometimes when like because, like at night, like stars would start like falling down, and when that happens, bosses respawn. So I'm just like over here, like, do I have to wait for like these bosses to respawn? Which is, which is part of the reason why, as I mentioned earlier, I probably have like half an hour where I spent just like AFK while I was at lunch or dinner because I was on Chaos Island and I wanted to get that star dust, star rain, whatever it was called. I wanted that to happen so I was able to go and fight bosses again. Don't worry, I eventually figured out like where other bosses were and stuff um, by exploring the map. I know, crazy. Um, so I was eventually able to get through that, but I gotta say, I think Chaos Island was kind of a low point of the game. But I, what I, what to um, kind of go back to like a good point or a high of the game, I guess you could say. The other islands were pretty good. Um, I don't, I, I couldn't really tell you anything specific about them, uh, besides the fact that they do, in fact, be islands. Um, the first one was pretty good as an introduction. I do remember that. The second one was a pretty good desert, I guess. Um, it was a desert island it was fine i couldn't again i couldn't tell you specifics about each island i wish i could but i'm kind of going off the bat here i'm kind of going off my memory here which is maybe a downside of this i can't give like full proper in-depth analysis analyses on everything because i'm kind of going off what i'm remembering right now no notes nothing um so yeah I'm kind of just going off the top of my head i've said that too many times let's get back on track chris um, so, the, the islands are pretty good besides Chaos Island. I didn't, like, hate playing the game at all. Even on Chaos Island, it just pissed me off a bit, but I didn't hate the game at all. 
Um, but what I really did like about the game was surprisingly the bosses. Um, so the bosses were like titans and stuff, like these giant ass robots that look like that they came from um, from Xenoblade Chronicles. I know an RPG mentioned in a Sonic video. Is that even a is that even allowed? But um, yeah, uh, Xenoblade inspired, I want to say. But the boss themes were great. Um, if you're lucky, maybe in the video I put a couple of them in here because I think those are some of my favorite Sonic songs ever. Um, especially like Undefeatable. I think that one's a really good one. And conveniently enough, that's the first one, like the first boss theme in the game. Um, it's for like, like Gigantro or whatever the name of it was. And I will say the bosses in Sonic Frontiers were piss easy. They were not hard at all. The only time I really struggled was the first one, and that was only because I didn't know about parrying, because I skipped, I accidentally skipped past the tutorial. So I didn't know about parrying, so I didn't know how I was supposed to damage the boss. But once I figured that out, the bosses were pretty easy. Um, we're not talking about Final Frontiers here, Chris. We're not going to be talking about that part of the game. Um, but yeah, the bosses weren't, weren't hard at all. They were piss easy, as I mentioned already, like five times probably. But what I really liked about them was like the cinematics of it and just how badass it felt fighting the bosses because Sonic is supersonic, okay? No duh. That's how he defeats them. You, you get the Chaos Emeralds in each island, the seventh one is on top of the boss, and then it goes into the boss fight. Great ass boss themes start playing. These like nice punk rock sounding songs, great songs, find your flame, undefeatable, great, great. I mean, Breakthrough It All isn't bad either, that one's pretty good. Um, but the bosses, like, like, when you're fighting them, they're not hard. I've mentioned that already. I need to stop repeating myself. But, um, they're also, like, just, like, cinematically, like, good to, like, I guess watch. And, like, just satisfying to beat. Because Sonic, I will say the, the bosses really do remind you that Sonic is badass. Because... My favorite one, like the, my, fain, my favorite finale, not favorite, favorite finale for a boss in the game is when you're fighting against the knight. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called, the knight. It's the third one, the one at Chaos Island. Was it Chaos? Yeah, it was Chaos Island, conveniently enough. Um, so you're fighting this third boss. You're fighting the knight. Fighting your flame is play, playing. And like Sonic, like, so you defeat the boss. It's a cutscene, and Sonic grabs the sword of the of this bastard, and he just slices this bitch in half. And I'm just like, holy moly, Sonic, you are badass. That, like, actually genuinely had my, my jaw dropping, like, oh my god, this is great. And, like, all the fights have something like this, too. I, I can't specifically remember the, like, killing blow of the other bosses. Um, despite the fact that I've played New Frontiers, or Final Frontiers... Final Horizon the other day. Um, I couldn't tell you the specifics, but I do remember them all being pretty good. On top of being good, or on the topic of being good, the story was pretty good as well. Um, obviously, there was some pretty cheesy dialogue in there and stuff. Um, what drove me the most nuts was Amy's love for the Coco, and it's like, Amy, I know this is part of your character. But I don't care about the Coco as much as you do. That was like the whole thing. The Coco were pretty cool though. I will admit the Coco were pretty cool. But I, I just thought it was kind of funny how much like Amy really cared for these Coco. It's like, okay, whatever, Amy, you do you. Um But I really like the story. Um it it like follows um Sage. That's her name, right? Sage. So she's a creation of Robotnik. And I guess she's like was created to um, protect him or whatever. So obviously Sonic is you know the like the um, the enemy of Robotnik or Eggman. Sorry, I'm just used to the, the Sonic movie names. Um, also, let me know if you want to hear a Sonic movie three review when that comes out because I'm seeing that day one. Anyways, so she was created to um, protect Eggman and. Uh, Eggman, Amy, uh, Knuckles, and Tails were all stuck in cyberspace the entirety of the game, basically. You were able to interact with Sonic, or with 
Amy, Knuckles, and Tails in the islands. I don't know if you're able to interact with um, Eggman at all or not. And I know he had a part, maybe, in the final fight. Um, which we'll get into eventually. But, um, so, obviously, uh, Sage was made to protect Robotnik. And Sonic is the enemy of Robotnik. So Sage is like, oh, you're you're the uh, you're the you're that one guy that my that my creator hates. So uh, you're gonna die. And there's something to do with like Sage having like the ability to like anger or make make the Titans aggro against Sonic. But as the story progressed, um, I get by like watching Sonic interact with his friends and stuff, and by um, like I guess kind of. Learning more about Sonic as a person, Sage starts getting a soft spot for Sonic, and is like, it's a it's a shame that he's destined to not, like the odds aren't aren't in his favor to prevent what's happening, um, but Sage kind of like over the over the period of the story, Sage kind of like becomes I guess you could say Sage kind of becomes human, um, because obviously she's not a human, she's like an android, AI thing that was created by Eggman so obviously she doesn't have like human emotions and stuff but as the story progresses you can see like her growing that sense of humanity and like I guess like learning what love is and stuff because you know obviously Sonic shows love to his friends and his friends love him and whatever not like romantically but you know just on like the level of fr like friends do and it was kind of like it was it was cool to see like that kind of growing throughout the story but obviously, like, Sage's story isn't the only part of it. Um, we'll, we'll get into, like, where Sage is at the end of the game. Um, while we get to there. But we also see, like, I guess kind of, like, the character development of the other Sonic characters throughout the, throughout the game as well. Amy, um, I don't remember her story. She was like obsessed with the Coco and saving them and helping them and whatever. So Amy was being Amy, but I do remember. So like Knuckles and Sonic have always seen each other as rivals and stuff. Um, they're, they're like friends, but like they're not like, you know, on the level of like Sonic and Tails where they're like really close. Um, but we were kind of able to see as like, as like you go through the game as Sonic and you're on the second island and you know, you're interacting with knuckles and stuff you're kind of able to see and there's someone being really loud with their motorcycle it's not shadow by the way which is kind of crazy um but you can kind of hear or you can kind of see uh knuckles and sonic have like grow more of a respect for each other where you know obviously there, there's a rival rivalry going but on between them but like you can see like that deep down they would truly do like they would truly like save one another if it came down to it they don't hate each other and it was kind of nice to kind of see that like i guess their bond grow through the game and then obviously with tails um sonic's right hand man sonic's um uh sonic's uh partner in crime uh you're able to kind of see that all throughout it he's kind of like going through like self-doubt and stuff where he's like I'm like nothing without Sonic. I'm always following him around. I can't do anything on my own. But as like as you progress through his story, uh, or but as you progress through like your interactions with Tails through the game, Sonic like kind of opens up that whole dude. You are in fact a, like a really like capable being because like there's like he like mentions like stuff about like times that. Tails has saved Sonic, saved him, and that kind of like opened Tails' eyes up about like that you know he can be his own he can be his own person. He does have and he does in fact have a um side of him where he's able to do stuff without needing Sonic. So like seeing that open up for Tails was pretty cool as well. Um, so by then um you get to where Sage is like actually like. Like Sonic and stuff, and it gets to a point where I think they interact. It was like like Eggman and like them. They interact or whatever, and they decide that uh, the best thing to do, or that they that 
Eggman and Sonic need to work together. So Sage is on your side now. So you learn more. Do you learn more? I don't remember. Um, so you learn more about Sage, obviously. And like uh, Eggman and Sage go to like collect the Chaos Emeralds or something. I'm trying to remember this. This might have been the DLC. Hold on. Anyways, Sage um, and Robotnik, they do something while you do something else. Uh, I think they're like trying to open up the uh, the doors to the last emerald or something. I remember that. But anyways, so you get all the last emeralds on the last island, and you face against the final boss supreme. Um, badass boss, by the way, just like the other ones. Uh, great song. Uh, what it was it called? I'm here is a great one. Probably one of my favorites, actually. I know I said Undefeatable was pretty good, but I think I'm Here is my favorite one from this game. And that's probably not a hot take. I think that's, like, everyone's favorite. Which, for for a good reason. It's a, it's a great it's a great song. But, so, that, that theme plays. And I'll just say right now, I played the game on normal mode. Because it was my first time playing or beating a 3D Sonic game. So, I wanted to kind of get the normal experience. So... Uh, how m the final boss worked out for me would be different from others that played in hard mode. But anyways, so you defeat Supreme, and uh, you you get to fighting the end in space. So Sage takes over the body of Supreme, um, which was like kind of like the final vessel of. No, wait, no, that's the DLC I'm thinking of again. Jeez, I am mixing up things here. Um. But Sage takes Supreme, you and Sage go up to space, Sonic and Sage go up to space, and they, um, it, it comes down to, like, fighting a frickin' moon, basically. That's what, um, that's what the end was. Based on what I've heard, though, I guess the end is, like, interpreted differently from person to person, so the end could have been something else to someone else, but to Sonic, he saw it as this giant-ass ball in the sky, so... Uh, you fight the end, uh, and it's just a couple button clicks, and the end is defeated. So, unfortunately, in the base game, the, the final boss wasn't that great. So, the game kind of ends on a low blow, um, where the final boss wasn't great. It wasn't the worst thing, but it wasn't, it wasn't too crazy. It wasn't kind of like what you would want. So... It was like, okay, um, the, um, final boss wasn't, wasn't the greatest thing in the world. Thankfully, though, that was changed in the DLC. Um, so, when I get into that, I'll be able to talk about that final boss more. But, yeah, the game kind of ends in a way where it feels underwhelming, but in general, the game was pretty good. The game was pretty good. I will say that. So, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to, like, summarize my thoughts here. Because I was kind of rambling here. I'm going to try to, like, kind of give a quick, condensed version of my review here. Sonic. He controls pretty well. Cyberspace, um, he controls kind of bad, but it's not the worst thing. Just kind of a, kind of a thing that I didn't like. He controls great elsewhere, though. Feels janky at times, but he doesn't feel horrible he, he 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 controls pretty well um the world was pretty great um the open world was pretty good the only problems i really had was chaos island because of the fact that it was a bunch of floating islands and because of that i didn't know about them and i because of that and the fact that i didn't know about the bird thingy that you can use to cross the islands um i didn't no an optimal way of traversing it so because of that i didn't like chaos island much but wasn't bad it didn't make me hate the game the bosses were piss easy but they were spectacles they were badass in the fact that sonic is beating up these giant freaking robots that are heavily inspired by xenoblade chronicles of made i may i add and i don't know they were just really satisfying to beat they were easy but they were satisfying to beat uh the story was pretty good, where Sage, like, you learn about Sage, and I forgot to mention, she sacrifices herself at the end, but there's a credit scene or something where Robotnik 
remakes her or re makes her alive again. I guess I don't I don't remember. It was something like that. Um, but so Sage might be alive, but she she had a pretty good story. The story in general was great. You got some good character arcs, some good character development. Got some throwbacks to old games that uh, might not have been mentioned in a while or might have been neglected, like story elements. And like, you kind of get those elements and they're like paid off decently well from past games. And I think there's like a couple from like maybe Sonic Forces or like Sonic Lost World or something. There's a couple like mentions of those games and like those events and like how those like how like specific characters might help Sonic in those. So, callbacks to some pretty bad games. Good callbacks though, so not not too bad. And then the the final boss uh first phase was pretty good against Supreme, but once you get to the end it's kind of underwhelming because it is just a couple quick time events where you click a button like pretty quick like you ha like have to time the button well and um there is um I i'm pretty sure in the hard mode it was like a galoka kind of game that was the final boss from what i heard um i don't know but overall the game was pretty great would i recommend you playing sonic frontiers yes yes i would um if you can enjoy it without looking anything up because i did that I beat the game without looking, at, without having to look anything up, and it was satisfying. It was satisfying to, like to play the game from start to end. I like it was one of those games for me, one of the rare games for me where I actually like, like was like invested the entire time in beating it. Like I didn't want to put it down. It was like, like I said, it was like over a weekend I beat it, and I like there was like a few times where I would obviously put it down because I had to go do something, but like. I, I enjoyed it. I, I, I like. I wanted to come back to it, like in between, like what, I, like things I was doing. I was like, I want to beat this game. Like, I, I had a great time through and through. And I hope that other people had similar experiences with the game. Um, I hope I'm not in the minority of people who think that Sonic Frontiers was good. And um, yeah, so that's kind of my thoughts on it. With Sonic Frontiers in a nutshell, I guess in like a 35 minute long nutshell. We're, we're approaching that pretty soon it seems like i'm not gonna i'm gonna try not to make it to uh 35 minutes but if you did watch all the way to the end thank you very much for uh for watching this uh i th th this is kind of an experimental format for me because i've done podcasts before and i've done like these unscripted videos but i haven't really done them in like a way where i talk about a game that i've played I've, t I've talked about games in the past but i haven't like really gone into detail about like a specific game so if you want to see more like this one uh please let me know please let me know like what i could do to i guess improve the format while keeping it simplistic what which is what i'm going for don't tell me like make sure you like condense all this down into like a 50 minute long video because i'm going to keep to the raw audio format where it's like me talking to the microphone for however long i'm talking to it uh and like no pauses or like cuts here and there almost i really need to because something's going on like someone yelling outside the window gotta love that gotta love the college life um but yeah let me know if you like if there's anything i could improve in this format and i guess like what other games you you think i should play um i think the next sonic game i'm gonna be playing is sonic adventure 2 or sonic x shadow generations whichever one i get to first um actually a few minutes before i started recording this i i was uh le like legitimately totally not emulating sonic adventure 2 to make sure that everything was working in case i wanted to play it on the on a dreamcast emulator not at all i was playing this on a genuine dreamcast so sega please don't please don't sue me i was playing this legitimately okay okay yes um but let me know what other games i should play um i'm kind of open to anything right now I'm open to game suggestions. I'm not an RPG guy, so if you suggest an RPG, there's a good chance I probably won't play it, unless it's a Mario and Luigi game. Um, so I guess when the new Mario and Luigi game comes out, you could expect maybe a kind of a similar review format to this here, where I talk about the game and give my thoughts on it and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's all I really have to say here. We are approaching 35 minutes, as I said I wasn't gonna do, um, but. I, I hope you did enjoy this one. If you did enjoy this, uh, please consider subscribing. 
um, and leave me a like on the video and letting me know what I should do next. Uh, with that said, I'm the biggest nub on YouTube, Chronic the Hedgehog, sorry, Chris Tendo, sorry, I'm sticking to, I gotta, I gotta stick to my branding, I'm sorry, I'm not rebranding to Sonic YouTuber, I'm still the Nintendo guy, still the guy that makes videos on questions you didn't ask, but, um, that's it for this one, I'll catch you guys in the next one, goodbye.